I'm going to show you how to combine several simple Arduino sketches into one sketch so you could do multiple tasks at one time. So let's go. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. I've had a lot of emails lately about questions on Arduino about things are getting too complicated for them and they can't get things to work. And I'm going to show you how to combine sketches together. As an example, I'm going to show you a welder scene that I did a few years ago. In this example, I took it one step at a time, making a sketch for each one of the tasks that I wanted to say, like the first sketch that I made, I made to turn on the building lights. Then I made a sketch to turn on the fire in the barrel, which has three LEDs on PWM pins. Even though the Arduinos have six PWM pins, I divided it into two separate Arduinos in this case because of the timing in there. Arduinos are microcontrollers that can only do one thing at a time. So the PWM pins are constantly going and going and going. So I had to put the rest of the stuff on another Arduino. And that's another sketch. And I used the DF Player Mini with a series of MP3 files to get everything started. And then I went into the welder scene where I used the sound to activate the LEDs on there to flicker as the sound works. And then once it went through that sequence, I did another sequence of sounds. Okay, I'm done. Shut the welder off. Douse that fire in the barrel. Shut all the lights off and let's put this thing back up on the pole. You, you, you got it, boss. And then I transferred everything back to the original one to shut everything down and then get everything ready to start over again. So actually I have two sketches, but it started out with about five different sketches. And that's the way you have to do things is to do one step at a time, get it to working good, and then combine all your sketches together. And let me show you how I did that. On the left is the original flickering fire sketch, the names, the pin numbers, and whether they're an input or an output are identified here in the setup. Included in the loop is the instructions for each LED. On the right is the same code with a few minor adjustments to the values. Comments were added to each line to indicate the pin numbers. Encasing the code with void flicker and the curly brackets creates a procedure to simplify the code in the loop. All the pins and the variables are identified in this section here. In the loop, you could see the procedure flicker that was created earlier. The line below flicker state changes the variable to a one. In order to be able to turn this sketch on, I added a sensor to it. And with that sensor, you have to put in a conditional statement in there to get the thing to start. So once it goes through the process, it doesn't try to start it over and over again. So once it's running, it'll skip through that and ignore it. In this conditional statement, the code below it will only run if both conditions are satisfied or true. Building lights procedure was taken from a previously tested sketch and the second line sequence started equal one changes the variable. Since the variable was changed, the next conditional statement between the curly brackets can be executed. If the sensor in the first line of this code was not actuated, then the additional lines of codes would be skipped. Since we're calling the procedure flicker, we're changing the flicker state variable to a 1. This sets up the next conditional statement to execute the procedure trigger welder. Trigger welder is another procedure that I created from one of the original sketches which transfers focus to the second Pro Mini board with the other sketches on it for the welders and other audio sequences. 
The stop pin in this statement refers to the contacts of a relay which is normally high on the second board. So this statement is ignored until it is low. The curling bracket on line 66 signifies the end of the loop, so the loop will continue until it finds a conditional statement that has both conditions that are true. Once the lights and the barrel was lit up, I had to transfer everything over to the other sketch. And you would think that was pretty easy going from one Pro Mini to the other, but it wasn't. I started out with the Opto Isolator, thinking that that was a pretty easy task because it isolates the signal from one to the other. But I ran into problems with the high became low and low became high and it wouldn't switch even if I only had it on for a second. What I had to do was put a relay in there, put the relay in and just actuate the relay for a couple of seconds, then turn it off. That, get, that started up the second Pro Mini and started the sequence there. And that's the way that I stopped the Pro Mini also, the second Pro Mini. That's how I transferred it back to the first one to shut everything down in the first sketch. Now you can imagine putting all these sketches together would come out to a really, really long sketch on there. And the way to cut that down is to make your own procedures on there or functions. And this is what the final code looks like. To recap, what you need to do to combine your sketches together is get each one of your sketches working individually and then add your second sketch to the first one and make sure that that works that way. Then add another one and then keep on going and adding and adding. So that way, if you run into a problem, you know where to cut it off and you know where that problem is. Say like if you run into a problem between the third, third and fourth sketch, remove that fourth sketch and redo it. Re go over it again and try to figure out why it's not transferring from the third one to the fourth one. And once you figure that out, then you can shorten those up, write the code for each one of them, create a void loop for each one of those sketches. So you only have to write them once. And then you just write the procedure up on the top in the line and call that procedure down. It's written down below. If you like what you see in this video and haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell and click on that little notify all so you can be notified when I have a new video coming out. And remember everything that is in this video, the links are in the description down below. So until the next time, we'll see ya. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was, I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in guide. <laughs> I need my glasses for that. I'm Tom Kovicek. I'm Tom Kovicek, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of